the other story is about a journalist who wants to do a story on, a, on, a, on an underage uh, sex performer who she, who she finds online and her inappropriate relationship that develops out of it. And of course, the, uh, the, the drama in that story comes when the FBI see her story and want the information about where this kid is and she promised to keep it uh, safe and promised to protect the kid. So she's, she's torn between whether or not to lose her job and tell the FBI all, everything she knows or to protect the kid. She didn't do a Judith Miller in uh, Ju of the New York Times. Remember, Judith went to jail. Yes, instead. Judith went to jail, and I mean, this is a big issue that jur you know journalists are facing: is, is how far do you protect your sources? So that's one of the themes that this movie explores. I represented Judith's brother for many years. Did you know her brother was Jimmy Miller, the Rolling Stones producer? I didn't. The guy who produced Brown Sugar, Gimme Shelter. Amazing individual. I yeah. didn't know. But what a family. Yeah. So Judith Miller is the. Uh, half-sister. I guess she was Bill Miller's daughter and Jimmy is Bill Miller's son. So I just thought I'd throw that a little aside in. Uh, fascinating. Were you a rock and roll manager? Um, I was, um, I'd rather talk about you, but I made many records. I had four albums out in Europe and Jimmy produced one of them. As a musician? Right. Oh, are you kidding? And I negotiated the Johnny Thunders deal from the New York Dolls. Oh my God. Remember the New York Dolls? Oh, Huh? Who are you? I'm just some guy that does a TV show. I don't want to talk about me. I want to talk about you. No, but that's fascinating. Can I, can I have an interview with you after this is finished? Um, sure. I mean, you know, it's just fun stuff. What instrument uh, uh, did you play? Oh, no, 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 no. Were no. you a singer? Yeah, I was a singer, played piano and guitar. But that's not about me. It's about you. I'm sorry. I, the Judith Miller thing was important. Yes. And that's you okay. Well, you can cut this up any way you want, right? Or you don't edit these. This is all um, one take. Well, because of last night's... Uh, I'm, I'm going to do some editing because of last night and then today I wanted to put the two together okay. and have a fun time with, with you. Your script writer, do you sit down with him and look at the script? Do you work by email? How does it work? We sat down many times. Uh, he, you know, he'd written a really brilliant script. Uh, you know, I, all I did was research it further. So uh, as I said last night, I found a lot of real people and I interviewed a lot of real people real cybercrime detectives, real FBI agents, real uh, underage child uh, porn performers, uh, real cyber bullies, and that reinformed the script and it just refined it and added more detail into Andrew's already very strong, sort of very compelling script. You know, he had laid it all out um, and I had just made it more real. The internet's just one big glob of information. Was this movie kind of reflecting that, you know, you have to sift through disconnect, you have to sift through all of the you know, the TMI coming at you. I almost felt like it was a real life version of the Matrix, of people plugging in and just kind of leaving the real world to be in this uh, fantasy, if you will. Yeah, I mean, you know, we all, we all, mostly the internet and technology is incredibly useful and connects us all. It is uh, the most exciting thing to me that, you know, since electricity though I wasn't around when that was invented. So I, I absolutely love technology and I'm myself slightly addicted to my phone as many of my friends are as well. Um, you know, I certainly didn't set out to make a movie that was anti-technology or that was preaching uh, anything. It's just these are three stories that, that were right, you know, right out of the headlines and I just wanted to make them all as realistic as possible. It does bring up questions, the movie, like how much should you be on your phone? How much should you, time should you spend with your family? How much should your kids be on the iPad? Um, these are all questions I think all of us are trying to figure out personally. Uh, you know, I, I've heard stories of couples who don't want technology in the bedroom. I've, uh, I've, I've some friends with which I play a game where we put our phones in the middle of the table and the, pers the first person to answer the phone has to pay for the meal. So I think all, it, all of us individually are trying to figure out a relationship to uh, our devices. But I feel like that that is just one of the questions that comes out of the film. The film is not about that. You know Grand Funk Railroad, remember them? Yes. Mark Finer. Uh, yeah, He's been on the show a couple of times and, and he said that he disconnects the cable. He didn't want his kids, now his kids are adult. But when they were growing up, this is from an interview 10 years ago, he said he didn't want them watching all the commercials. And he just wanted to keep them away from all that junk, and and I don't disagree with him. Yeah, it's a little commercials to me. You're always hitting the mute button. Yeah, because there's like some law where the commercials can't be louder anymore, and they still are. 
Yeah. So it's um, disconnect is more than just the cell phones, the TV too. Yes, I mean now there are commercials on the internet. You know, yeah. So you can't avoid them. And they pop up. They do. They pop up. 